Hello and welcome to SAS Bootcamp. This is week two, video four. And in this week, we are going, in this video, we are going to talk about deleting rows within SAS. Before we begin, uh, by now you must have understood how conditional logic works in SAS. So I want to take you a little step further and help you, help give you an insight about what happens behind the scenes when you actually execute or run a certain piece of code in SAS. Let's say, for example, that you have a data step. Right, with a data statement, a set statement, and a run statement. And in between the set and the run statement, let's say for example that you've got five lines of code that you're executing. Whatever those five lines might be. When you hit execute, or when you compile that program, what happens in the background is that there is something called the SAS program data vector. And that's just the name of the part of your computer memory which creates the new data set that SAS runs. So this SOAS program data vector actually reads in the input data set that you give through the input buffer and adds those data into the output buffer based on the code you run. But it does this process row by row or observation by observation. So the way this works is it actually reads in the first row or the first observation in the input data set, executes the five lines of code you wrote between the set and the run statements, and then it adds the new row to the new data set. And then it moves on to the second or sec second row or second observation, runs the five pieces, five lines of code that you wrote between the set and the run statements, and then adds that to the new data set. And then it takes the third one and so on and so forth, right? So this is how a new data set is created by the SAS program data vector in the background when you run a simple data step. Understanding this is a little important for what we are going to do today in this video with deleting rows and uh, further when we learn a little more advanced things in SAS as well. So let's talk about how we can take advantage of this program data vectors process of adding rows one after the other. Uh, before I begin, I want to show you what way, what data set we are going to use for this particular video. Uh, and that is our boats data set. We've seen this uh, data set before in this video, in this week's videos. Uh, there's basically 10 rows in the boats data set and there are five different columns in here, right? What I want to do is I want to show how to delete rows in SAS and I'm going to show you guys how to do this using four different methods and Let me write down some code to help understand how to do this um, Let's say I want to create a new data set called pricey boats right? That's the name of my new data set and I'm going to set my Input data set as class dot boats. This is the data set we just opened and I'm going to show you guys how to delete rows when we do this Let me go ahead and write my run step first and then we can come in between and add some sentences of code What I want to show is the first method the actually the simple the the code the The command in SAS for deleting a row is actually very simple simply delete but instead of using delete, let's apply conditional logic to decide which rows of data we want to delete and which rows of data we want the program data vector to add to our output data set. So here's an example. Let's say I want to use the if then statement. I'm going to say if price is greater than 50, then delete. What this command does is it basically reads in every single row from the input data set but before it adds it to the output data set, it's actually going to check for this command. So it's going to say, is price greater than 50 or is it not? If price is greater than 50, then that row is deleted and it does not get added to the new data set. If price is less than 50, then that row gets added to the new data set uh, without any changes at all. So let's go ahead and run this and look at what our output data set looks like. So we went from 10 rows. Let me check the log really quick. No errors in the log. Uh, the output data basically shows you that we went from 10 rows to eight rows in this output data set. And you can see that none of the price variables are actually greater than 50. Now, if you recollect in our original data set, which is this file, there is actually one row here, which is 62. And this is the, and this is the only row which is greater than, greater than 50. So we went from that row to this, where we have eight rows, and none of them are great and none of them have a price that is greater than 50. So let me show you guys how to do this a different way, right? Uh, first, let's talk about another example for method one. 
And method one is basically what we will refer to as the delete command, right? So let's say we do if price is greater than 50 and, and I'm using Boolean logic within my conditional statement here and type equals CAT. I'm going to use my low case option here to make sure that uh, whatever I type in there is case insensitive. Then I'm going to say then delete. Please note because type is a is a character variable, is a string variable, I have to use single or double quotes around the word cat, which I have done right here. Now, I don't want to be using both of these within my data set, so I'm just going to go ahead and comment this part out. So we'll just run method one example two when we execute this piece of code. Let's check the log, log looks okay. Output data set now has nine rows, and you'll see that the, the uh, conditions are actually a little higher now because what we are saying in this piece of code is that in order for a row to be deleted and not added to the new data set price has to be greater than 50 and the type has to be catamaran if both of those conditions are met only then the row is deleted so if you look in here let's see if you look in the boards data set there's actually two rows that have a price greater than 50 right this first row right here and the second row right here 62 and 75 but of these two, one of them has type equals CAT, catamaran. The other one has type equals SCH or schooner. The way we've written our conditional logic statement is that rows are deleted only when price is greater than 50 and the boat is a catamaran, which this one actually meets those criteria. This row, row number eight, does not meet that criteria because even though price is greater than 50, it's actually a schooner, it is not a catamaran. So if you look in my output data set here, you'll see that the uh, board that was at a price 62 is not in this output file but the board which is at a price 75 is still in here because that second condition in my if statement was not met so this is one other way to do your to delete rows from your data set so let's go ahead and look at method two method two when you are executing deleting rows is basically similar to method one but opposite uh, what this does is it still uses a conditional logic, but instead of actually writing a command that says delete, we just don't say anything, right? We don't say anything. We just leave it at nothing but the condition. Now, this might sound weird because as we learned if then statements, every if command had to have a then command. But if you don't have a then command and if you just leave it without a statement at the end of that condition, what SAS assumes is that the new data set is created from the input data set only when this condition is met. So if you think about the program data vector again, it's going to read the data set from row to row. And if a certain row meets this criteria that says price less than or equal to 50, then it will add it to the output data set. If a row does not meet that criteria, then it does not add it to that data set. So what I'm saying here is the condition is if price is less than or equal to 50, which if you think about it is the exact opposite of the example we use right here, right? Because here we said if price is greater than 50, then delete. Here I'm saying if price is less than or equal to 50, then keep that row, all the other rows get deleted. So let's see if that works. I'm going to hit run, check my log, come to my output data set and there are my eight rows and there is no rows here where price is greater than 50. So this condition worked. Now, method two for deleting rows is, is, it works just fine, right? But I actually would strongly recommend you not use this method and you rather use method one because method one is more explicit in its commands. So when an external reader or when you are reading your code a few months down the road, you know exactly what you're trying to say when you use method one. If you use method two, which does not have a then statement, does not actually have a statement at all, it just has a condition, I think the code gets a little harder to interpret and understand. So I would recommend you guys stay away from method two, but this is an option to do so. The third method I want to cover for deleting rows is the same as the second method, except instead of an if statement, it uses a where statement, right? Here I have within my where statement, the same piece of command, the same, same condition. It says where price is less than 50. And it actually does the exact same thing as the if statement. If and where work slightly differently in the background, 
but they accomplish the same thing. And what this is saying is that rows from the input data set can only be added to the output data set when the price is less than or equal to 50. So I'm going to go ahead and hit execute. Taking a little bit longer there. That's the difference between the if and the where statements. And my log looks okay. I come to my output data set and it's run exactly as I intended. There are eight rows and none of the rows actually have a price greater than or equal to 50. All right. Having shown that, I want to go over now. I will comment this out by adding the asterisks at the end, at the beginning. And let's now look at method four and see the last way that we are going to talk about which actually can help you uh, delete rows from a given data set. This one also uses a command, so it's explicit, just like method one, um, except it does the opposite of method one. Let's show you guys. So in this one, instead of using the delete command, we are using the output command. What the output command says is when a particular row should be added to the output data set. If after a condition, we add the output command. It is saying that when that condition is met, only those rows are added to the output data set. So in this case, if price is less than 50, then output, which means that as the program data vector is looking at a certain row or an observation, it's going to check to see if that condition is true. And if price is less than 50, if the condition is true, then it will add that row to the output data set. If the condition is not true, if price is greater than 50, then it won't add it and the row automatically gets deleted. So it's the same thing as method one, except it does the opposite because we've used the output statement instead of the delete statement. My log looks okay. I look at my output data set and there you go. We have the eight rows from the data set and none of the rows have a price greater than 50. So any of these four methods for deleting rows work just fine. But if you had to pick, I would strongly suggest that you use method one which is the most explicit and is the simplest to understand because it uses the delete command. The output command can be used in a few other ways as well as we will cover later during this bootcamp, um, which makes things a little harder to understand in my opinion. So I would recommend using the delete command and method one as much as you can when you're doing this. That ends this video. Um, I will follow up with you guys in my next video where we talk about deleting columns.